Hi, welcome to Detours, Understanding Acquired Brain Injury. Um, this is part of my Survivor Series. This is me just sharing from my own experiences as a survivor of two traumatic brain injuries and just my own experiences and thoughts and things I've seen from patients and from me trying to help them through my experience as well as my specialty focus as a nurse in traumatic brain injury and acquired brain injury. Um, I want to talk about a loss, a grieving and loss, and some of the issues that we face as survivors. I've always said that we survivors form one big family. Um, it's dysfunctional, it's strange, but still we love and care for one another because there are things we understand and experiences we go through that most people without the profound disabilities that we tend to face, the multiple disabilities. And so I just want to address one of these kinds of problems that we tend to face. And it, that relates to grief and loss for us. Sure, other people with disabilities do face very similar kinds of things, but what's different for us is that our disabilities tend to be acquired. I mean, hence the acquired brain injury um, thing. It's not developmental and it's not uh, genetic or late onset. Uh, this happens through something that happens. We're ordinary folks going through our lives and suddenly something happens. And really, we end up having to say goodbye to our old selves. Uh, who we were, what we were before, what, our, what we kind of anticipated our future to be or what could have been. And society has for, for birth and growth and eventually for death, we have rituals. We have ritualized things that our society does to say, you know, hello, or as we move along, congratulations on that accomplishment, or, you know, it's time to get ready to, you know, develop your own family, become head of household, coming of age, you know, marriage, and, you know, the showers for, you know, you know baby showers and stuff like that. And, retirement parties, things like that, those are less formalized, but still, they're, you know, that transition in life and graduation parties, and finally, we have death rituals, too, and that's to say goodbye to provide closure for loved ones. With brain injury, we don't have any rituals to, in effect, say goodbye to our old selves, and for our friends and family to say goodbye and prepare us for taking on new roles, which are very different often from the old ones we took on. We can't be a breadwinner, perhaps. We can't be caretaker, perhaps, anymore. Instead, we receive the care now. Or we can't earn the income that we once did. Or we're no longer the son or daughter that they put, that the family put the hopes on, or whatever. Um, we are different now. And we don't have those rituals. And for loved ones, as well as ourselves, this is what's referred to in psychology as an ambiguous loss. And for friends, too. Uh, friends, acquaintances, other people, workmates. We maybe no longer can work or drive. And that means that we also are now disconnected from society at large. Many people turn in on themselves with all these losses. Loss of family who just don't get us anymore. Who, who don't understand What's happened? Why our behavior has changed? They don't understand the injuries they cannot see. Again, they don't have rituals to welcome the new individual that you've become. And many times it isn't that you're now a new personality or anything like that. It's that certain aspects of your personality have been brought forward. Things that you learn to suppress or that if maybe you had a hot temper or something before as a kid, your parents kind of disciplined that out of you, it's back. Or um, you were maybe a little more forward before with what you were thinking or saying, and now that's come out due to lack of impulse control. Or maybe you were shy and retiring as a kid, you are quiet, and your parents kind of pushed that out of you and kind of had you be more forward. It's not that you're a new person in that sense, but it is that old traits that were either pushed out of you through, you know, Skinnerian behaviorism, those kind of things were developed and 
pushed by discipline, things like that. And those skills maybe have to be relearned if you wish to reacquire some of your old personality. But that's not really the emphasis here. The emphasis, what I'm discussing here, is that loss and the fact that there's a lack of closure um, for family and friends. And that's part of why many of us lose those bonds, because there's no resolution for it. You're still here. You're still sitting there. You're still talking with them. You're still interacting, but you're definitely not acting in the way that they've become accustomed over years and decades of you being. They have to relearn everything. And frankly, in a society in which everything is disposable, it's easier just to walk away, in which an internet button push ends having to deal with those problems, in which family can easier just walk away. So I blame a lot of society and it's... Um, and just it's a cut loose, throw away kind of approach. In the old days, you still needed. And so we stuck to our guns and stuck to changes as they came. Although many of us would not have survived back then, but still. And so we have to deal with these changes ourselves. So it means that we have to decide what is important to fight for. We have to write the next chapter in our lives, even without necessarily having the closure we seek. Now, there are different kinds of... Um, kinds of grief that we have to deal with in these ambiguous losses, like frozen grief, which is the most common kind, which is where you never really get to wrap it up. You're always in a state of grief, forever. And this is true for the second type of ambiguous loss, which is where you're like, what What shall I do with all of this? You know, what shall I do with continuously being reminded of the past? And one of the things is to look for other friends, other people, other Members of the family that maybe you weren't as close with or didn't talk to as much. you got to reach out. And yes, that costs energy. I know that. Um, I feel that way. But that's one of the ways I've dealt with it. Is to reach out to different people and to build you know, my own family. And that's how a lot of people in the brain injury community deal with it. One of the other types of grief that we deal with is unsupported grieving. Which is where people don't take it seriously. They look and they say, oh, come on. It's like you're fine. Mm, notorious words. You're fine. Get up off your butt. Get back to work. Get back in the family. You start taking care of the kids or you start getting back to work or work. They don't understand and you fight that all the time. So I wanted to just like touch on the fact that loss and grieving is a big part of why things are so difficult for us. We never really get a chance to complete our grieving because we're still here things have changed for us and other people don't understand it either. And so one of the most important things we could do is try to build a new network for ourselves, a new social network for ourselves, with apologies to Mark Zuckerberg, uh, to build a new social network for ourselves, new friends, new connections, and to try to see if we can rehabilitate some of our old self, um, if you're willing to invest the energy, or if it's preferable just to cut your losses and to say, look, that was me then. I am this new person and I'm going to set new goals for myself. I'm going to set new aspirations and I'm going to accept it because sometimes acceptance is the best way to find resolution for this, even though it's hard. Because the truth is we just don't have rituals, appropriate rituals for ambiguous loss. And I'm hoping some of what I share here today will help make things just a little better for what is probably one of the most difficult situations in acquired brain injury. Thank you and have a good day.